Aging of a hematopoietic stem cell, uh, I think, is uh, defined by the fact that a single hematopoietic stem cell produces less blood cells, right? So when hematopoietic stem cells are young, uh, early on, they produce many of these hematopoietic stem cells and they have the capacity to self-renew themselves. So a cell divides and then you know, one of the two daughter cells has maintained stem cell activity and during aging. What we see is per cell, per hematopoietic stem cell, there's much less cells produced. Particularly, there's much fewer lymphocytes produced, so they like to produce granulocytes. But an old hematopoietic stem cell produces much fewer T cells and B cells and much more granulocytes. And also, um, its, its self renewal activity is diminished, so it produces fewer stem cells uh, by itself. And so this is, I think, uh, how the aging of the hemoglobin stem cell is defined. That's a cell intrinsic component, basically. Uh, and also what we see in mice and also in human, that uh, although they, they, so their, their functional activity is less, so they produce fewer stem cells, but the number of stem cells increases. Uh, so probably as a consequence of the fact that there, that there are fewer, but, uh, you know, they, they, uh, sorry, that they, pr that they do worse, there are more stem cells actually, so that ultimately that compensates uh, out. And ultimately then what you see in the peripheral blood of, the, of, of mice and, 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 and people actually is that the blood cell counts gradually you know, go down or that uh, leukemia develops. So hematopoietic stem cells, stem cells in general, are defined by the fact that they can self-renew, right? And so self-renewal is not compatible with aging, right? So if a stem cell self-renews, then, then that means that it does not age. And, but what we, what we see is that, and so, and so what we see is that actually stem cells do deteriorate, the functionality does deteriorate with aging. So that has been recognized, I think, for the first time probably in the 1980s, when people actually did experiments where you take stem cells and you transplant them into a mouse. And then you take stem cells from that mouse and transplant them again to another mouse and another mouse and another mouse. And so these serial transplantation experiments are historic, right? And, it, and they show that with time, these cells do worse and worse and worse, right? So it's very difficult to study aging in, in humans because, you know, you cannot really, uh, at that time, particularly not purify stem cells and do a lot of in vivo assays. You cannot do serial transplantation experiments, of course, with, with people. So most of the uh, historic experiments have been done uh, using mice, um, and there it's clear that, that, that stem cells age. So initially then it was just descript kind of descriptive. And then there were a lot of mutant mice that showed st stem cell aging uh, phenotypes. For example, mice that have a deficiency in telomerase uh, and therefore cannot maintain their telomere length they were shown to have a strong stem cell phenotype, so they, the stem cell aging phenotype basically. So any uh, mutation that affects genome integrity actually uh, has an effect on, uh, on, on stem cell aging. Well, so at this time what we are, uh, what, what people use as a tool is first of all, you want to purify stem cells, and so this is a, I think an important aspect. Uh, and again, to, to make sure that these stem cells uh, can somehow be uh, induced to self-renew, right? And if self-renewal uh, changes, deteriorates with aging, then I think it's very challenging uh, but exciting to believe that maybe one can reintroduce or induce self-renewal activity in cells that actually have lost that activity. So basically rejuvenate cells. So currently in the scientific literature, there's a lot of studies that try to, you know, change aged stem cells into young stem cells, right? This is all very experimental and very difficult. Um, but, but depending on why stem cells age, uh, the mechanisms of stem cell aging, it is conceivable that some of these uh, aging phenotypes are reversible and you could potentially change them. Um, it's difficult to see how that would ultimately go into, into, uh, into humans you know, and whether there would be a role for, let's say, um, you know, bone marrow transplantations to restore blood cell formation in old people. But that having said, I think it is the field of stem cell biology in general, I think, will make it possible to restore tissues that have 
that have been lost during the aging process, ultimately also potentially in humans, right? So that I think is a very important aspect. So, so we study stem cell aging of the hematopoietic system, but actually we also think that many of these, um, of the, of the, uh, the mechanisms of, of, of aging have been conserved in other tissues. So whether you stem study stem cell aging in the hematopoietic system or in the gut or in the skin, we think that most of the, of the mechanisms that underlie stem cell aging are probably conserved. Yeah, so we believe that there's a couple of hypotheses why stem cells age. Uh, one is the accumulation of DNA damage. So every time a cell divides, it accumulates DNA damage. So if a stem cell divides very often, it, it is likely that it has accumulated many DNA errors. Uh, and so evidence for that comes from mice that are deficient for DNA repair enzymes. And so these mice typically have, a, have, a, have a, an aging uh, phenotype. An example is indeed telomeres, so telomere shortening. So the ends of chromosomes that shorten with each and every replication. And so mice that have difficulties in maintaining the telomeres also have a strong stem cell aging phenotype. Um, but there's all kinds of other mechanisms that could potentially play a role. Um, so uh, it's possible that um, all kinds of epigenetic modifications of the, of, the, of the health histones basically that are very strictly controlled when cells are young somehow change you know, in the context, in the, in, in, the, in the time frame of a single cell division, and particularly in many cell divisions, you would have many, many of these epigenetic marks that gradually change. And therefore, as a result, these cells have lost somehow, you know, their stem cell identity. And so it's clear that many of these epigenetic modifying uh, uh, genes, enzymes, I guess, uh, have a clear stem cell phenotype. Not necessarily yet in aging, but, uh, but they do affect stem cell biology. So DNA methylation is another example where certain regions of the DNA in the genome, so the genomic DNA, have been methylated. Um, and so that th those are inherited or not to daughter cells. And therefore, you know, again, with cell division, uh, it's likely that these DNA methylation marks uh, change during aging. There's other uh, good data that suggest that the activity of mitochondria uh, play an important role. Uh, so the energy metabolism of a cell. So stem cells normally are very quiescent and are deeply asleep. And so uh, the energy consumption of a cell uh, may have an effect on aging, particularly if there's a lot of re reactive oxygen species generated during the energy process. Uh, uh, and they might, might have a toxic effect on, on proteins, but particularly also on, uh, on DNA. So there's a lot of potential avenues, I think, that, that, that stem cells uh, can age. And, pro and probably the answer is why stem cell age is that all these things together act uh, and make sure that the, or ensure, I guess, or, uh, or correlate with, with the deterioration of stem cell activity. So I think in 2014, this is a very exciting time to, to do biomedical sciences because many fields seem to come together, right? For example, in the field of stem cell biology, since 2006, we can actually reprogram cells, you know, uh, and so we can go more or less take a cell and go back in time and make an induced pluripotent stem cell from that cell. Um, what we will be able to see in, in the very next future is how to, outside of the body, you know, in vitro, ex vivo, uh, tease cells into a specific differentiation pathway so that we can produce a lot of cells, potentially even tissues or even organs outside of the body. I think so. So stem cell biology used to be a field where, you know, you would either study blood or you would study the intestine or you would study the skin, and now all these fields uh, come together. And on top of that, there's great technology, for example, uh, when it comes to DNA sequencing. So we can actually sequence RNA or DNA, for example, in young or aged stem cells, and very carefully molecularly define what these changes are and how they might be caused. So it is a convergence of a lot of uh, yeah, technological breakthroughs, uh, you know, equipment, and also the amount of, 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 of tools and applications that, 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 that emerge are uh, impressive. And it's very difficult, you know, in 2014 to say what will happen in the next 10 years, right? But if you go back and say, you know, in 2004, 10 years ago, uh, we knew a lot, a lot, a lot less than what we know now, right? So it is very, likely that in the next 10 years, uh, maybe unpredictable, um, uh, you know, I guess many of them will be un unpredictable breakthroughs will be made.